Welcome back. You know, all evacuation orders were lifted yesterday in Clackamas County from the fires that raged through that area for the last three weeks. Well, that means that people are now finally allowed to return to their homes and return to their lives. Yeah, but what happens now for those whose homes and jobs were affected by the wildfires and what lessons, <clears throat> excuse me, can we learn from this tragedy? Joining us is Mary Lago, Executive Vice President at Ferguson Wellman Capital Management. She has some advice and a personal story to share as we talk about the finances of fire. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. So I know you have uh, some personal experience going through a situation like this with the California wildfires in 2018. I do. My mom's home was one of over 13,000 homes lost when the campfire overtook the town of Paradise in the neighboring community of Concow in Northern California. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, definitely a, a lot of uh, lessons I'm sure that were learned after that. And so uh, just from your experience and in your profession, you know, what are five things for, to consider for fire victims and reminders for all of us? Well, sure. First and foremost, reach out and rely on your financial advisor. They can provide you some really great guidance in terms of whether you need to raise some cash for short-term needs or whether you're wanting to make sure you stay on track with your retirement planning. Also, as you face key decisions, like are you going to change your state of residency or are you going to purchase a new home and use a mortgage? They're an invaluable resource as you make these key decisions that really can have broad reaching financial impacts. I think a lot of people, you know, think that when they have insurance, that's the first thing they're going to turn to after a wildfire. Uh, what should they know about going through their ins insurance and starting that whole process? Sure. Well, first, of course, um, insurance is top of mind if you've just had a loss. Um, but it's important to keep insurance coverage in mind as you plan for any future emergencies as well. So for those who have just had a loss, make sure that you're getting with your insurance agent and understanding your coverage. How will your items be valued? Do you have special protections that apply for any cleanup that might be required by the cities or counties? What about landscaping? If you're rebuilding, are there extra, excuse me, additional coverages that you have that might apply for building a new home up to current codes, those sorts of things. Um, but it's also important as you think about planning for future emergencies, what kind of documentation might your insurance company require in order to pay you out for those losses? So it can be things like receipts or photos or videos of different items. But if you've lost your home, where are those items stored? So it's an important reminder to keep backups of all your records, whether they be your family photos, your tax returns, or receipts and documentation that you might need an insurance claim. Even home users can take advantage of a lot of different backup resources to make sure they have access to those important records when they're necessary. You know, we saw a lot of businesses that were lost in these fires too. Is, is there anything additionally that those people need to be doing um, who were, you know, affected by these fires? Certainly. So, so because so many businesses were lost, that means also a number of individuals and their jobs were affected, right? So one of the most time sensitive things to do if your job was affected is to file for unemployment. And that's because there's some waiting periods that can apply. So you don't want to give up any of that potential coverage. FEMA also has a number of different resources, whether it be agriculture loss, small uh, business losses, certainly backing up small business records is important, but it's also important to make sure you're tapping in to all of the available resources that might be available to you. So your insurance agent, your financial advisor should help with that, but there's also some great resources available um, through disaster assistance programs. I know this, this whole process must just be so overwhelming for people. We've seen uh, unfortunately, scammers coming in in situations like this, trying to take advantage of fire victims who already have so much going on and, and they just want to start getting those repairs done or getting back on their feet. So what are some of the, the red flags and the things people should look for to avoid being scammed here? Sure. Well, you know, tragic situations tend to bring out the heroes, but also some scammers. And so it's important as individuals are thinking about um, making next steps in their life that they protect themselves. So the first and foremost, I would say, make sure that your financial accounts have adequate protections. If you're not receiving mail at your home address, make sure that you have a backup so that you know any changes that are happening on your account, you're receiving those notifications. Many financial institutions also provide now dual factor authentication, making it harder for other individuals to gain access to your account. So those are two important steps. 
When it comes to home construction, certainly always getting a second bid. Anyone who's in too big of a rush to do your repair right away, that's a big red flag for me. Okay, well, Mary, thank you so much for joining us and hope your mom is uh, doing okay after she lost her home two years ago in the campfire. Thank you for your thoughts. She's doing great. And uh, I just will encourage all of those going through this loss today. There's another side to the story.